Hi, I'm Brand, and I love Hallmark movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark movies. I am Kevin, and I am in Hallmark movies. <laughs> and I am somewhere in between those two, to be honest with you. <laughs> and this, this is, is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. <laughs> Brandon and friends host his podcast. <laughs> we hope you like this jolly podcast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yep, yep, boy. Yep. Yep. This is it. This is this is legend territory is where we are. Legends. I mean th- this is this is the real deal. We, legend we, of the screen, legend of my heart. We made his deal work somehow. <laughs> uh feisty lawyers that Kevin Smith has, but we made his deal. Oh, yeah. Uh <laughs> Kevin Smith. Lee, it's good to see you, sir. Well, thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here, guys. I love it. I'm very, very curious to see how this goes. <laughs> it's going to go great. It's going to go great, Kevin. I, it's going to be awesome. I had lunch with Pascal yesterday. Yesterday was my birthday. I don't know if you guys know, but Pascal, we, t- we take each other out for our birthdays every year. So she told me that this was a lot of fun. So Man. you got to live up to that. That wow. makes me happy. A lot of fun. That's really good. And also, she told us in the rapid fire segment of her interview that you guys go to this one specific restaurant, I believe, for your birthday. Is that correct? Yes. Because we asked her. Yes. I, go ahead. I told her the name of the restaurant is Joe Fortes. And I was I told her yesterday because she mentioned that you said that. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going to tell them that you take me to McDonald's every day. <laughs> she's. She is cheap. She's wonderful, but she's cheap. Yeah, su- <laughs> you can supersize your meal That's just right. on your birthday, <laughs> yeah. Lee. That's it's right. the best exactly. we can do. We it. can't. Maybe a Tim Hortons donut since we're in Canada. Mm. That's all I. There's mm. my Canada joke. We did it. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm just. I just want to jump in, Kevin, because I'm happy so happy birthday. We, happy birthday, of yeah, course. Of course. Congratulations yes. on another year. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Let's go back to your original birthday. Um, your birth, <laughs> the day that it happened. Okay. I, I will, yeah. and then let's fast forward a little bit. I don't want to get into all the nitty gritty there. We don't need um, to know specifically. I, I do want to focus on your childhood a little bit, uh, where okay. you were born, what you were like as a child and kind of that first, uh, maybe itch to do something called acting. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is, I, I love these kind of questions. Who doesn't want to talk about themselves? Unfortunately, I don't remember the moment of conception. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> um, but I, I, I live, I was born in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Uh, only stayed there for a few months and then we kind of hit the prairies and I lived in a lot of prairie towns over the years. And um, I was not raised in a family that gave one fly and fart about art or 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 theater or cinema or anything no certainly no music or anything so i was kind of a redneck growing up to be honest with you and um i had a friend of mine go that i guess i'm skipping ahead here till maybe grade six or seven and we became best friends he just lived down the street from me we didn't go to school together but um we became inseparable and we were not particularly good kids we we developed this habit of skipping school and we would stay home at my place and we'd get out whatever kind of cameras we could find or cassette recorders and we'd practice these skits sort of like uh, sctv skits and then we would just take them out on the local city buses and try them out and see if we could get people to laugh and, and enjoy themselves. And more often than not, we got some we got some good laughs. And but I didn't think of it as a uh, any kind of a vocation or anything. And then school progressed. I mean, that's a bad choice of words. It didn't progress well. And and then I ended up in university. Somehow got my way to university and then was asked politely to leave. Um, they said that uh, you obviously aren't ready for this. You don't, your, your grades are, you've, you've dropped enough classes that you won't go under review, but if you continue with the classes you do have, you will go under review and then we're going to kick you out. But if you leave now of your own volition, we'll let you back next year under your high school grades, which we're okay to get in. And, uh, so I left and, um, I didn't tell anybody for a while. And then I remember, I went to visit my mom and we were having dinner and I told her and I was really embarrassed about it. And, uh, and she's like, okay, well, what's next? I'm like, I I don't know. And then she said something that was very interesting. And she said, well, what do you like to do? What do you want to do? What do you enjoy? And I couldn't think of anything. I really couldn't think of anything. And then I thought, oh, what about those skits that I used to do with Ronnie? That's his name, by the way. Shout out to Ronnie. Ronnie. Still, Still one of my best friends. 
And um, and I was like, well, I used to love that. That was awesome. I mean, really used to enjoy the, you know, doing the skits in the room and then taking them out. So um, my mom was like, well, I'm not sure what that would be. I'm like, is that stand up comedy or and I didn't like the sound of that because I was quite shy. And uh, she's like, no, I think that's acting. And I was like, OK, all right. And then that was kind of it. It took a while, but I went back to university and, and uh, went back to wow. the performing arts and been knocking it ever since. Oh my the, the skits that you were doing, were these like things that you had seen before and you want to try to recreate them like some kids do? No, or were these no, like ideas no. that you guys are coming up with? Yeah, these are these were totally original ideas. We would be arrested today for trying any of them. Um, <laughs> then I but, will not ask were, which one's your favorite. We're not trying to cancel Kevin no, Smith no, here. No, no, they were yeah, grossly inappropriate, but uh, very funny. Um, I mean, we could do them in front of kids. We weren't like that awful, yeah. but uh, but they were they were all ours, and we remembered these skits forever, and we still refer to each other by the names. Like if I sent him an email, it's still the one of the names from the skits and things like that. So it was uh, it really though did like when we were on those buses. Like it's one thing to be in my house in the basement doing these skits, but when we were out in public on the bus, the the rush that we got or that I got anyway from doing these was like, oh, okay, yeah, I could see myself enjoying that. Especially so when I went when back you're to doing it, unsolicited skits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody, yeah. these people are just trying to get to work and they're like, oh, we're doing Absolutely. skits. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, no, they, they often, although every once in a while we'd get a guy or a gal who would come up and be like, you guys should take this on the road. That was really funny. Oh, so, wow. You know, yeah, some people really hated it and wanted us to leave, but some people laughed. <laughs> it's real. That's, that's really a tough crowd. That's yeah. really like a, a really unique story that I haven't. Like, I feel no. like if that would happen today, like kids would record it on their phone and maybe go and say, oh, "Hey, yeah. watch this. Tell me what you think." Yeah. Yeah. But like, you had to go out and actually do it. That's like, and you did really, it in front of the toughest crowd. <laughs> like, you don't know. Yeah, it was bus. a tough crowd. Yeah. Yeah, they were tough crowds. That is, I thought I just assumed stand up comedy at a place like the cellar where people just can come yeah. and have been drinking all the day. Like, this is harder. Yeah. Like, you don't know. You don't know if they're even right for your material. You're just like, we're going to run over this. Yeah. Don't even know if they speak English, that, to be honest. Yeah, with you. yeah, give you <laughs> the confidence you need. I do have a few yeah. questions. You said we just went, we moved. You said we grew up on the prairies, plural. Were you yep. moving from yep. prairie to prairie? Like, what was your well, what were your parents doing? In Canada, the prairies are basically everything in the middle. So there's like three or four provinces that are in the middle. And so I, I started in Edmonton, like I said. So that's Alberta, sort of like the Badlands kind of thing coming off the Rockies. And then we lived in Saskatchewan, which is dead center. And that's just wheat as mm. far as you can see. And then spent some time in Manitoba as well before you get into the next kind of interesting looking range in Ontario. So uh, it was my my folks divorced very young. Okay. Uh, when I, I was I think I think I was seven um, and we were raised by my I was raised by my dad and uh, so he got a job we were living in I think Regina when they got divorced and he got a job transfer to Calgary which is where I spent most of my childhood in Calgary so Calgary fan or Oilers fan Edmonton Oilers or do you care Ooh, I don't I I did care when I lived there. I really okay. bought into yeah. it. Yeah. But my kid, my kid, my my uh, youngest son is a real basketball fan. Oh yeah, so everything is basketball. Great, good. Yeah, love to hear that. We we both love basketball as well. Basketball. It's both, both awesome. passion for us. Um, have you seen the show Letter Kenny? As oh, okay, I got a good Letter Kenny story if you want. I would hear love it. to hear. But you said rednecks, and in my head, Canadian yeah. rednecks are the folks on Letter Kenny. Like that's what that. Yeah, that's, that's a one to one. But they have they talk really fast though, which is different than you know. I'm from South Carolina. We, you know, right, we right. pride ourselves on being rednecks, and and we definitely slow yeah. it down some. But Letter Kenny tends to speed it up. But that's what I popped in my head. I didn't know if you'd seen it or not. But I love to hear the story. Well, I, uh, first, I want to make sure, do you know those guys? Uh, no, no. T Tyler Hines, who's been on the show a bunch, he knows yeah. Jared, who is okay. the guy that created it, and he is goes up and does stuff and, like, speaks very highly of them, but we've never met them personally. No. 
Okay, so I'll tell you my story because what do I care? <laughs> um, so I was at this restaurant in Toronto, and I love this place. I go there all the time, and um, it's called Bar Isabel, a really great Spanish place. And I'm sitting at the bar, and this guy's beside me, and the bartender was just doing his job and asking me a few questions and uh, asked what I was doing there. I said, oh, I'm actually from Vancouver, just here doing a quick thing. I think I was doing a, a movie out, out there with Kelly Martin at the time. And uh, so... I, I'm kind of reluctant to start talking about acting in, in front of crowds and stuff, but I don't want to lie about it either. So I was talking to the bartender. There's a guy beside me, heard us talk about that. He's like, oh, yeah, so you would know me then. Like, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, I don't. Oh, He's boy. Like, oh, well, and then he, he told me his name, and, I st- and I, to this day, I don't remember it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I'm like, sorry, I still don't. He goes, you, you don't know who I am? And then he mentioned the show. And I'm like, mm, sorry, don't know the show. <laughs> and and he was, and I'm just an idiot. I'm the wrong guy to talk to because I don't know any shows. And if I did know it, I forgot it. I forget everything. <laughs> and so, but he was, he was a little tipsy and he was so mad at me. He was so <laughs> oh upset. Oh my gosh. He was so upset. So I looked him up when I got back to the hotel and he was one of the guys who was the creator. I love the it. Like, this is fantastic. Yeah. And I just, yeah, just your bad. demeanor in the 10 minutes I've known you, I'm sure it was so kind and just like, I wish yeah, I, man, I, I, wish I, wish I, I could it. help you I, out. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't trying to be rude at all. It wasn't. I wasn't. It wasn't a big, nothing uh, personal. You know, it's just a no for me. Oh. I don't know. I'm uh-huh. sorry. I wish I did. I and could. That's, and that's you want me to? I'm an actor. You want me to play along? I could be like, yeah. <laughs> I love. I, I love what love you're it. doing love all it. the time. And that's how we met uh, Tyler Hines. That was a crazy story. That's right. Yeah, really cool. Tyler. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't Tyler. No, it wasn't no, he Tyler. didn't create that. No. He just has gone up. And, yeah, he didn't create. Of course not. So you do the skits. You yep. talk to your mommy. Rom says, "I think that's acting." What's yep. What's next? Because you you you're no longer doing school. No, what, but he went back. He went, he went back, back for acting. I I did I did go back actually a little segue. So the first thing I did is I didn't know that acting required schooling. <laughs> I just figured, oh, I'll take an acting class. So um, I I was in and out of my father's house at the time. We we had a tempestuous relationship. So was I was he, ha- on, I he to was be- not on board. I'm sorry to interrupt you. He was not on board <laughs> with acting. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> not he wasn't. He wasn't at least in the beginning. No, uh, eventually he got on board, but in the beginning, did he just thought it was the silliest thing in the world? I remember when I told him, he's like, "Oh, let me get this straight. You want to be the next Tom Cruise? Is that it?" <laughs> and I was just like, well, "It's not such a bad thing. <laughs> I could I could do worse." But um, so I uh, I found an acting class across the street from where my father lived at the time. And uh, I just signed up and it was this little sweet old lady's house. She had a a couple, she was a hippie lady and her husband was a hippie dude. And he taught piano lessons upstairs and she taught acting lessons downstairs. And uh, so I joined and I was all of about four or five classes and we did a performance for everybody's families and stuff. And I was hooked from that point on. And then they all told me, no, you need to go back to school. You need to get, you know, get back to university or college or whatever and go to a proper theater school and learn how to do it right. And, uh, and that's what I did. What was the moment where you were like, I'm doing like, I, what was the thing? What was the role that you got, the audition you went on, the play you did in university, whatever it was, what was the thing where you're like, yeah, this, this is, is this is freaking it right here. I'm an actor. This is what I'm doing. Come hell or high water. Okay. Uh, I think the best answer for that was at, right after I finished theater school. Loved theater, and I really enjoyed it. I bought in hook, line, and sinker, all the academic classes. I, 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 it's like I just turned a switch on in my head, and I went from being a lousy student to being a good student because I really liked what I was doing. Not just the acting part, but even, the, even the academic classes. Um but when we got out, I always, the whole way through theater school, I had a giant Achilles heel. And that's where the redneck part comes in because I had no idea how to sing. I couldn't <laughs> sing. I couldn't carry a tune. Um, my family used to joke that we were all tone deaf. Um, so even though I'd done some leads and musicals while I was in school and during, you know, theater in the summertime and summer stock, uh, it was bad. I'm not a good singer. <laughs> And I, when I, as soon as I got out of the theater program, I was like, 
I should probably focus my efforts on film because I'm to make it in theater. I didn't want to be broke, broke. So <laughs> I was like, if you're going to go into theater, you really got to be able to dance. You got to be able to sing and you got to be able to act. And I could probably tackle dancing if I worked really hard. Acting's fine, but singing, no chance. So I did a, I just kept looking for film auditions and this one casting director in Calgary actually um, had uh, put in a call to our school and said, Hey, do you have anybody that might be right for this poll? She was just throwing a, a large net out and they threw my name in. So I went in for an audition and it was, um, it was, oh gosh, it was really cheesy. And I cheesed the heck out of it. <laughs> I, I did all the all the worst things so it was it called for a guy it was like a ranch hand on a on a cowboy kind of show but he, he was supposed to be a motorcycle guy so i drove up on my motorcycle and i went in i was wearing all my motorcycle stuff and then he's supposed to be a real jerk like a real jerk this guy and at the end of the scene i decided because he's supposed to make an advance on this girl an unwanted advance so you you can't do that so i was like well i'll just take my shirt off and, and i took my shirt off and i kind of threw it at her it was such an arrogant horrible thing to do but it got me the part because she was like oh my god you are this guy and they were and it was the first film audition i'd ever done wow. and and i got a series out of it and they called us um I think a day or two later and said, Hey, are you ready to go and shoot this? Like, can you do this? And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I can do it. I can do wow. it. Wow. And then, and then they called me back two days later and said, no, you're just, you're too green. The producers are worried about mm. you not a, a slow and this is going to go in a different direction. And I was like, I was so bummed. And then two days later, they called again and said, actually, they really want to meet you. They, they can't find anybody else that, that they like. So I drove up there and it was really about, uh, whether or not I was that big a jerk. Like if I, if I was the kind of guy that really just takes his shirt off and throws it at somebody, they were worried that I was a, you know, a, a bad dude. So we met, we talked and before they, by the end of the meeting, they pushed a contract in front of my face and I signed. Wow. wow. Just like that. Just like that. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? There. That's pretty good. You, you mentioned that growing up, your family wasn't like big into the arts, not a lot of uh, no. movies or music or anything like that. When you decided you know, you want to act and you decide that maybe film or TV is a thing. Did you like just start consuming a bunch of TV and movies? Like what, what were you turning to to kind of be like, I, I like what this guy does. And I like, was there anything that stuck out to you as like, I, I want to be like this actor or anything like that? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I liked movies as a kid growing up. I was a sci-fi guy. I liked star Wars and all that stuff. Um, but I, I remember going when I started back at theater school i remember the girlfriend that i was dating at the time she and i went to this little art house theater it was her idea and um kind of cool room and everything and we watched casablanca and i'm mm. like oh man and like that's cool like it's just all the 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 feel of it and the and the the whole aura and the lines and the the costumes the music the sound i just bought in i was like this is so cool and uh so there wasn't a ton of that in my life uh, up to that point. But then once I got into theater school, a few of the academic classes were sort of, they kind of played well with a lot of the acting classes. So they do like classics, literature, poetry, stuff like that, that kind of was related to some of the old, you know, the Greek tragedies and stuff like that. And um, so I, I loved all that stuff. And uh, I would, lie to the teachers if i hadn't read these books i'd be like yeah 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 of course i read it. of course i read it and just trying to get a laugh out of the other kids in the class but then when i finished the school i was like i should probably read those books <laughs> so i started so i started reading all of these famous books and stuff from you know around 1900 and stuff and moving forward and i just i started reading old plays and i started reading old screenplays and watching old movies and uh before I knew it, I was, you know, and I found modern people, artsy fartsy guys like David Lynch and weird, wild stuff, and just fell in love with it. So, so you get, uh, you get out of school, and you get this job immediately. You get this series. Were you still, since you weren't living with your dad, were you still like? 
supplementing income, like bartending, waiting tables, doing all that, grinding, going on auditions. That was kind of the process. I was very lucky uh, because I had literally just got out of theater school and my father was letting me, I kind of lived with him and a little bit with my girlfriend. It was rocky, but we made it work. I had a job um, bartending very briefly. I was the world's worst bartender. <laughs> um, but my father actually ended up hiring me for a while. Um, his, his, his secretary quit and uh, he was a business guy and I just worked the phones for a couple of weeks when I got out of school. And um, that was kind of that was kind of it. It's the only real job wow. I had until uh, after. So the job that series didn't go for long. It went for one season, but it got me an agent, got me a bank account, got you some got money. Some, yeah, got me some money. And so I moved to Vancouver and uh, started spending more time in L.A. And um, then I went broke, <laughs> and then I had to get a job. Job. So I I, I bartended for two more years in in sort of like 95 96 and uh that was it those and i was again i remembered how bad i was <laughs> worst bartender you ever saw i wanted to close my section every night didn't care about the money just just, yeah. just hated the job and uh and so when that when that ended that's the only the only other job i've ever done wow I just realized something in 94, 95, 96, you're starting your acting career. And also there's a guy named Kevin Smith who has made yeah. one of the most important independent films because of what yeah. it meant to other independent filmmakers. And he's bursting on the scene with clerks. And then he gets to write mall rats chasing Amy. Did that yep. so close Kevin Smith, Kevin Smith, did that mm -hmm. cause any confusion as you were trying to get jobs? No, not really. Okay. Uh, the the most confusion that I ever got was people just not being able to pronounce my name. No one, no one. You guys got it right. I'm I, Pascal. You must have listened to her say it or something because no one ever gets my name right. We we did the best we can, Kayvon. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate <laughs> it. Kayvon. Uh, <laughs> Kayvon. A funny, so a quick funny story. So, why I go to the coffee shop with my kid one time, my eldest son. And anytime I order a coffee, they're like, what's the name? I always say Kevin. I just say yeah, Kevin because it's, it easy. it's easier. So he says to me, he's like, Dad, why are you saying Kevin? Your name is Kevin. It doesn't make sense. Like, why are you embarrassed about your name? I'm like, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, excuse me, miss. Could you? It's actually Kevin. And she's like, Calvin? I'm like, no, no it's Kevin. <laughs> Kevin? No, Kevin. Calvin? No. <laughs> Gavin? No. So I look at my son. I'm like, he goes, okay, dad, I get it. I get <laughs> Done. It. That's all I need. Say no more. Yeah. Say no more. Yeah. Uh, easy. It's easy. That's great. Easy. Um, how often, so you mentioned that you spent some time in LA. Did you ever actually move to LA and try to do the whole yeah. LA thing? Pilot season yeah. and everything. How was that? Yeah, I did. I did pilot season um, a bunch of times. I ended up moving to Los Angeles and I, I was there on and off for probably about five or six years. And I did it the wrong way. There are a lot of the guys that I know that have done really well just go and never come back. And and I guess that just wasn't destined to be my way. I would go until I ran out of money and I didn't want to get a Joe job. I did it all legally with old with work permits and everything like that. So I couldn't get just regular jobs. I had to, you know, stick to the the acting gigs. And my first time going down i was hooked up through a friend with this other guy um who was looking for a roommate and i moved in with this guy and we became we're still best friends to this wow. day and and neither of us like the guy that set us up that's funny <laughs> so, yeah it's pretty ironic but i i would go down and i would spend four or five months uh, i remember the first pilot season i tested nine times i did nine screen tests and none of them worked out but that's back when it was like uh, it was just like a feeding frenzy yeah. and i was doing you know five auditions a day every day for four months and it's insane yeah yeah that's a lot uh do, it's do lot. you have a memorably bad audition story like where you just oh god yeah <laughs> oh so many <laughs> So many, so many, yeah. I mean, literally so many, but I have, I do have, there is one that kind of shook me for a while and actually sort of squeezed my confidence out of me for a while. It was for uh, Battlestar Galactica. Oh, wow. And I got a, I got a call 
and and it was right after I had just done this pilot and the pilot was supposed to, it was really great. It was going to be, a, we were told we were picked up, we were picked up, we were picked up. And then the night before the announcements, they said, oh, it's too expensive. We didn't get picked up. And then there was a writer strike and then there was nothing. And I was broke. And I just went out and made a quintessential actor's mistake and I bought myself a brand new car. Yeah. So I was like, uh-oh, I need this job. So um, I get a call from my agent. This is several months later and nothing is happening. And she's like, they really want you for this job. They just want to, they just want to meet you. So I was like, Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. I need a series. And then, um, day goes by, I get a call about seven and they're like, listen, I don't think they're going to have you audition, but just in case I'm going to send you the sides. I'm like, Oh God. So the, I, they sent me the sides and it was a two page monologue oh. side to side, <laughs> top to top, all all technical jargon oh, like the gosh. whole thing basically i'm describing the low tech computer components of how this whole thing works oh my gosh and, oh it was the worst i'm i can do lines fairly well but i need at least 3 days my brain is a 3 day brain <laughs> i just it just takes that long to get there and i stayed up all night and i was just walking in circles trying to get this done so i and it of course the audition's first thing the next morning I get there, it's slammed with a bunch of people I know, all the guys I compete against. And right away, they're like, oh, Kevin, come on, they want to meet you. Come on, they're so excited. I go in there, there's 10 guys, and, or 10 people. And so I say hi to everybody. We're, I'm, we're joking, we're having fun. Oh, and the whole time, in the back of my mind, I'm like, please don't ask, please don't ask. And then just as I'm about to walk out, they're like, oh, hey, did you get a chance to see the sides, the, 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 the lines? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. <laughs> And right before I'd come into the room, I had, I had run it in my head. And it was like, if I got the first line, I was good. And then I could kind of BS my way through the rest. But then the next time I tried, I'd get the first two words out and then gone. Like, just oh, gone. All no. of it. Nothing. So I, I went in there and I'm like, yeah, I know it. And they're like, okay, well, would you mind? I'm like, no, not at all. So the guy who's the reader just says, well, it's just a big monologue. So I won't be involved just whenever you're ready. And I'm like, okay. And I read the first couple of words and I lost it. Oh. And I was like, and then it wasn't just a little lost, like it was gone. And the, the guy who was the main producer, he talked me up to everybody. He's oh, like, oh, Kevin's great. No. You're going to love him. He's so good. He's so, yeah. so I ended up having to read the whole oh. two page. And my voice was cracking. My lips were shaking. Oh. I was terrible. I tanked. And uh, so I got to the end of it. And, um, the guy gets up and he's like, listen, yeah, no, that was rough, but uh, I know that you can do this. You, you, you can memorize lines. You've been on lots of shows. That's not the problem. Why don't you just tell us the story? Just tell us the story. Oh. I was like, great, but it's two pages of technical chart. Oh I'm like, I'm, I'm basically telling you how this machine works and you can't lie or, or bluff your way through it. So I, I started again. I got a few lines out properly in the beginning but then i went blank again and oh. i just read it again oh it was terrible that is it was gut so wrenching terrible. yeah i, we, I, I had to relive it, it man i feel bad for asking <laughs> hey no that was i tough. have a funny one you want a funny yeah, one i love a funny one please pal okay, a palate okay. cleanser for you if nothing <laughs> yeah, else yeah, yeah yeah you should have okay, said so after you messed it up the second time but you put me on a city bus in canada i will destroy this <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should have said that but uh, so this this one was for uh, Outer Limits. I did a few Outer Limits, and this is, I think, my first one. It was with a Melissa, uh, Alyssa Milano. And uh, the, this is an audition. So I went in, and it was an ATCO trailer. So super thin walls. All the other actors can hear every line you say, every word you say. And the idea is, is that my character is a football player and she's an alien. We start kissing and making out and then we have sex and then she eats me. She uh, sort of consumes sure, my that's body. A very classic. We've story. all been there. Yeah. We've all been, been there. there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You guys can relate. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. So I, 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 there's a scene in the beginning. So I do the scene part. That's fine. No problem. And then we get to the, you know, the making out part and the sex part. And that's pretty awkward. And it's, I'm like, ah, nah, nah. <laughs> done. And he's like, okay. Um, 
I understand it's a bit embarrassing, but I need you to kind of go for it. So the scene part was great, but then just, you know, really get into the sex part, really get into the dying part because we're going to do this with the, the you know, the early, uh, early days of CGI. And I was like, okay. So I did it again, but only kind of half committed again. Um, and he made me do it again. And this time he's like, I need to see your physique because we'll be doing oh this. Oh my partially. gosh. So with mine taking your shirt off. And I was like, back then there wasn't a lot of thought on that yet. It was just like, oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah. And so I did. And so we did it again and again and again. Oh my and then finally, finally he says to me, he's like, have you ever seen that movie when Harry met Sally? And I was like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Goes, Do you know that scene when she's faking the orgasm in the restaurant? He goes, that's what I want. And I was like, oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So I, I go for it as, as much as I keep in mind, I'm just a kid. I was probably 20, Four, and maybe. we have that Quite clip secure. if we want to go ahead and play the <laughs> no we don't okay yeah. sorry <laughs> it probably exists somewhere but uh so i i i i was so mortified by the end of it i walked out the atco trailers by the other actors and i didn't even bother putting my shirt on i just dragged it out with me <laughs> and left i got back to my house and oddly enough, I got a phone call and they're like, hey, so they really liked what you did, but they were wondering if you could come back and do it more masculine. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my God. It was so humiliating. I ended up getting oh, the job. But he oh got the God. job. Yeah. Kevin, I did get the job. Hey, can you uh, play Meg Ryan from When Harry Met Sally? <laughs> yeah, it turns no. out we need it more masculine, yeah. if you can believe it. Yeah. That is wild. Uh, that is, yeah. that's fantastic. Do you, Boy. Uh, what um what what ha what happened to the car you bought? <laughs> oh, I I definitely had to take yeah. that back right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, I it was an Audi and they were very nice. Oh, they, good for them. Yeah. Usually you drive those yeah, off the they, lot, you're in big trouble. But apparently the Audi dealership yes. in Los Angeles not their deals. first time. I'm sure no, not yeah. this yeah. one was this one was in North Vancouver. Oh, oh, okay, well there it is, Canadian. That makes a yeah, lot more sense. They're a lot nicer. Yeah. But, yeah. Kevin, yeah. you're in uh, Mission to Mars, and you are yes. uh, by the by IMDb, which could be wrong, seven or eight on the call sheet. So not a nothing like show up effect. Like you're in it, and yes. this is this is heavy hitters. This is Tim Robbins, uh, Don Cheadle, Connie Nielsen, Jerry O'Connell. And it's Brian De Palma directing, like legendary yeah. Brian De Palma directing. And so I, I don't, don't ever like to do the, what was it like working with? But this is an exception. I feel like I have yeah. to ask you this question. What was it like working on a film directed by Brian De Palma? It was really interesting. Like it was, I mean, he's a legend and to go in there uh again i was still quite young and you know tim robbins gary sneese don Cheadle. i mean these are these are big dudes you know and uh it was it was a little overwhelming and uh i, I happened to know i was quite good friends with two other uh actors on the show two other canadians i knew quite well and uh it was interesting to be on a, at the time if i'm not mistaken it was one of the top like top two or three biggest budget movies ever shot. Wow. And like a huge, massive hundred plus million dollars at the time or 200 was a lot. And it was wild to watch. It was uh, interesting. He, Brian was an older guy by this point and pretty set in his ways. And he could be can't he could be cantankerous, which was really intimidating because you just want to do a good job. And and then there was some. <laughs> it was it was really interesting it was a good experience in the end but it ended up being not a great movie and you could see why it was a disney movie and br why brian de palma's yeah. directing a disney movie is beyond me well i, re I but, just remember uh, it being pg and i was allowed to go watch it which i when i saw the first trailer before it was rated i was like well there's no way I'm, my parents are gonna let me see that and then it was a pg right. disney movie directed by brian de palma and i just there's a there's definitely a clash of of, of themes and yeah. styles happening there, um, yeah. And uh, but it, I mean, you know, you got to work for that guy. You have that story now of you know a hundred percent for sure, a hundred percent. It's unbelievable. And for my friends, for my close friends, I know there are many other stories. Of course, of course. <laughs> I no, tell, I I wish I we tell. were just hanging out at a bar. I think I'd get a better. Yeah. I think I'd get that was great. I think I'd get even more good yeah. stuff there. So we got to hang out at some point. I guess that's <laughs> on the agenda now. Yeah. Uh, yep. so you, you, you would go to LA, you did some pilot scenes, you did all that. Do you remember what was the, the project, whether it be a series, regular role or, or a movie or something where you could finally like 
breathe a little bit as an actor where you finally went, okay, I think, I think I, I can actually be okay for a little bit. I don't know if that ever really happens to be quite honest with you. Um, I, I think financially speaking, um, I did a movie, the movie I did, I did, it was actually another Mars movie. It was originally called mission to Mars huh. before the, the, the De Palma one took over, but it was, it ended up being called, I think escape from Mars. And we shot it just the year before mission to Mars. But, um, that one paid enough that it was, I could quit bartending, uh, which was huge for me. And then, um, it gave me some confidence moving forward that I, okay, I'm actually a professional at this now and I, I, I can make enough money to survive and build a bit of a future. Um, there were, there were, there were some other ones. I was, I was recurring a lot. I, yeah. you know, I'd done series leads on stuff, but I was really big on recurring things and I'd be on three or four shows at a time. So it was never one show. Like I remember I was recurring on 4,400 Stargate and Eureka all at the same time. Yeah, you, That and, was my question. You have 4,400 Stargate and Eureka. You combined to about 70 some episodes wow. there. So yeah. that's pretty for, for being recurring. That's a really regular paycheck. If you're doing all three of those at yeah. once, that's a lot. Yeah, it, it is. It, it definitely uh, made a big change in me. I, I got more confident. I, I was able to do regular things like buy a house and pay a mortgage <laughs> and do those sort of things. So you felt like a real professional. Um, and, you know, doing that many episodes, especially on different shows with different people and different crews, you learn a lot, you know, you're always working with new people, different styles, different directors, different actors. And you see a lot, you, you sort of absorb a lot more. We've, we've not seen Eureka. Uh, the two of you that you so can good. see on screen. However, uh, we have been told by producer Aaron, uh, the, you know, who produces everything for us. And she, that yeah. If we don't ask about Eureka, that she's going to Aaron, would you like personally. to ask about... Would you like to ask about Eureka? What or would you, you like to say, to, Aaron? Ask me anything. I don't know if I have any, like, specific questions. It's just, it was a huge show for me when I was in college. Um, Deputy Andy is phenomenal. There are a lot of times where I'm watching Wind Calls the Heart, and I am picturing Deputy Andy in those situations. <laughs> um <laughs> So that would be a fun crossover for me if we could bring Deputy yeah. Andy to Wind Calls the Heart. Um, I don't know. I just had a, like, there's a lot of Wind Calls the Heart. I mean, not Wind Calls the Heart. Hallmark actors from there now, like Niall Mater is on there. Um, mm -hmm. is it Colin Ferguson has been on a few Hall Hallmark. Colin Ferguson. Um, yep. I can't think of her name, but Niall Mater's love interest on Eureka. She just did one with uh, Victor Webster last Christmas. So Erica, Sarah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have you had a chance to work with any of them in the Hallmark realm or, you know, would you like to revisit the kind of the Eureka cast in the Hallmark world? Well, I, first of all, I'll say that I loved working on that show. That was a character. It's the first time since I got out of theater really where I did something that was very against type. It was a, I'll, I'll, I'll fill you guys in. He was a robot. He was a, basically a a robot who had a, a love affair with a house computer and he was just the most earnest sweet innocent guy you could ever imagine and he was so much fun to play it was so different than anything i'd ever done before <clears throat> and um so that show i got a lot out of eureka i really really enjoyed that as an actor and then um niall and i are still friends and colin and i are still friends and Hallmark used to do this thing. I don't know if this is a budget thing or not, but they used to have these things they call TCAs and we would come down two or three times a year and we would do some, some press upfronts. and they'd yeah. have a, yeah, it's just up front. Yeah. And, uh, so, but they don't do those right now. So, uh, but every time we would call on and Niall and I would get together and relive some old Eureka stories. That's fun. Super fun. So it. if a robot was going to have sex, so how would it, <laughs> If you could really TV sell TV, it, we're going to be clear. Yeah, but if uh, we're going to need you to be more masculine, and I, I do need you <laughs> a to be a masculine, yeah. robot, a masculine, a masculine robot. robot. If you're yeah. going to be yeah. a civilian. Shall we venture into Hallmark? Let's venture into Hallmark. Uh, how did, what was your first role with Hallmark? How did you kind of enter into the, the Hallmark world? Well, I did it before I got 
uh, when calls. I had done, I think maybe two or three movies oh, going way back, like just sporadically over my career. I think the first one I did was with, um, it was called Growing the Big One. Oh my which gosh. Is the, yeah, the most unfortunate title. I couldn't believe they kept it. Is it is a wild but, uh, movie. <laughs> yeah. I have no questions, Kevin. I have no questions about that movie because <laughs> you see, you right. seem wonderful. Well, uh, it's a giant yeah. pumpkin, right? They're trying to grow. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Why have you seen it? Giant. Because of Hallmark movie drafts. Oh, I see. We had, had to watch, watch every okay. movie that every win calls the heart star had done to oh. rank them the top ten. Oh, oh that's God. right. Yeah. Um, growing the big one. Growing the big one. <laughs> growing the big one. <laughs> the one. Yeah. It was actually, you know, it actually was a lot of fun. It, it was, it was a good time. Um, Oh, gosh, what's her name again? I don't know that one. I know Hello, It's Me, Kelly Martin. That's a more serious movie. That is not Growing the Big One. That is a much more serious yeah. film. Yeah, that is sort of, that was, I think, maybe the second one I had done. Shannon and, Doherty, uh, Kelly. I believe, is, is, is yes, Growing the Shannon Big Doherty. One. Yeah. Yes, of course, Shannon yes. Doherty. We had a great time on that show. She's a, she's a firecracker, <laughs> uh, but we got along great. And then the um, and then when I worked with Kelly Martin, she was She's wonderful. unbelievable, yeah. Uh, Oh, she's so nice, and and we got. She's such an easy person to hang with, and I like to improv on set. And she was cool with that, but that one was we shot that one in Toronto, and that is where I was shooting that one when that guy from Letterkenny. <laughs> kind of asked me. That's the movie I was shooting. You there. don't know me. That's fantastic. You don't know me. He was he was so upset. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love that for him and for us. Yeah, now. for sure. Um. Let's talk when calls the heart. Um, okay. How'd you get the, the role? Obviously uh, you come in uh, at a, uh, what, what, what season? It's did you three. I think three? I've been on there over a hundred episodes. Two, two, two. Okay. I started at the beginning of season okay, two. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about what, what you auditioned for. Was it uh, supposed to be what it ended, what you ended up being as Lee or how did that all come, come to happen? Well, Pascal had done uh, one episode or two episodes at the very end of season one, and they wanted to keep her on the show. So they wanted to find some kind of a, a, a love interest for her. So uh, my my agent asked me to, to read for it, and I said no, because the show didn't make any sense to me. And then <laughs> she asked me again, and I Fair. said no again. <laughs> and, yeah, and then and then uh, and then. Uh, Finally, she called me one more time and she says, listen, the guy who's directing the first couple episodes is Neil Fernley, who was a, he actually was the guy that was directed the first Mars movie I did. And uh, he and I got along great. And he, you know, through the channel said, please come in. It's just please come in and do this. So I was like, OK, I'll read. And he told me when I got there, we're just trying to see if there's any connection between you and Pascal. I knew Pascal because she was on the 4400 for a few episodes. And that's so we had met there. And so I was like, all right, all right, OK. So we did it. And I, so I got the job. And basically what they had told me is sort of what he was and what they wanted to do. Um, and I guess it would have been on my maybe second episode or something. I still didn't. I'll be honest. I didn't quite understand what was happening. <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't quite get it. So I was just. I remember I was off the side, and I just had this perplexed look on my face, like what? And Martin Cummins, who plays Gowan, came over to me and said, "Yeah, he's like, I know. Don't ever quit this show. Don't ever quit this show." And I was like. I'm not that I was, I'm not in a position, I'm not the kind of actor that quits shows. I don't have that career. So I was like, uh, okay, why? And he's like, because this show's going to go for a long time. Mm. It's going to go for a wow. long time. And I, I was like, really? Based on what? <laughs> like, That's I, I'm watching this. And he was like, the fans, he goes, these, there, there's a group of fans that have, that have caught wind of the show and grabbed hold of the show called the Hardys. And I was like, Okay, I guess it's a pretty good name considering when calls the heart, but I didn't know anything about it. And uh, I still actually still to this day, I can't believe the only reason the show is still a show is because the Hardys. That's, and the, but they've that's calmed it. down a lot, right? They're, 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 they're very chill. They're very, big very chill group. <laughs> yeah. Mar Martin's yeah. like, you think this show doesn't make sense? I do Riverdale. Yeah. And if you could, if I yeah, could exactly. sit you down exactly. and tell you about Riverdale, you'll be like, oh, this is. 
I love that Martin sense. Cummins is just spitting sage advice, uh, regardless yeah. of if he's on set or off set. He's just, you know, we've not talked to him, but he's on our it's list, just, man. Just fantastic. Yeah, that's great. The best. No, he, he's he's great, and it was very. Uh, that actually made me what what you just said about Riverdale. I that's one of the things that helped me get through those first few seasons because they really didn't make a whole lot of sense. I didn't know where we were or what we were doing on the show, and. I don't watch a lot of television. Mm. My So my wife sat me down and she's like, watch some of this stuff. So we just watched some episodic television and so much of it. You don't know what's happening. <laughs> like, it's like, what is this? So actually, I'm like, you know what? Our little show is, is not so bad. It's I, And then I started to buy into it a little bit more wholeheartedly. And then a weird thing happened is that after, you know, five, six episodes into my first season, Pascal and I became good friends and then our families became good friends. And then I got to know Aaron a bit better and I got to know all the guys and Jack and, and then uh, we became a family and you, we, we get paid to hang out as a, as a group. And I'm sure everybody that you've talked to says the same thing, and, but it's no less true. I've done, I've been doing this for a long time. I've been on a lot of shows and I could count on two fingers how many casts i've been including crew as well shows i've been on where people get along like this it's just it stems from aaron because she's super nice and she's number one and and if number one is awesome you can't get away with anybody else being a jerk so everybody else a trickle down effect but um it's it's like everybody is super tight it's pretty cool and you can tell and i i think for us, we've seen every episode of this television program. I think the thing uh, about Lee and Rosemary that is so great is is that, and I asked Pascal a similar question, but I, and I, I the way I phrased it sounded like I was trying to make a dig, and I'm not. But like in the Big Bang Theory, they just try to find ways for Sheldon to be in predicaments. It's like, well, how yeah. do we make Sheldon get upset because he has to drive a car or he can't control the germs or whatever? And what happened is yeah. somewhere along the way, a wind calls the heart, you and Rosemary became that couple that they could just fluctuate because you have this very, like, Rosemary has a very serious and Pascal crushes this. I don't know if I can have kids. You guys are amazing. But then it's like, what if we have him run a newspaper? What if we have him run the bar? What if we have him be mayor? What if we have him, uh, you know, have this lumber company? What if we have him negotiating deals with the mayors of other, it, do you just walk in and go, as long as Pascal and I are on screen, we'll make it work. Don't worry about that. hundred We'll make it work. Yes. hundred percent. Yes. But literally that's, we have these phone calls with the writers every year. And when they ask what they pitch their ideas to me and I have a couple ideas, I'm just like, basically, if you put Al and I in a room and put a camera on us, we'll find a way to make it work. And, and yeah, and we really, I mean, I need to branch out more and start doing scenes with other people. But my favorite thing to do, like, so we had, we had a scene we just talked about. I think it aired last week or the week before. And we're sitting on a couch in our house and we're just talking. And it is it, it was written as such a simple scene. Not much happens. And we just started riffing. And then the director was like, yeah, I love it. Keep going. Keep going. So That's we just great. kept going. And it just got wilder and wilder. And that is so fun. And and because we get along so well, there's a lot of trust. There's like she lets me go wherever I want to go and follows me. She doesn't break character. And then I let her do the same. And, you know, it's 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 pretty cool. Well, I, I can just say from personal experience as someone who watches the show and I'm not I'm not the target demo or, or audience for it last week. Mm -hmm. You know, so much of this show is like, all right, just kiss already, Nathan and, yeah. and, and Elizabeth, or like, just whatever, yeah. like Benson Hills, like, what are we doing? It's a mountain, like, it's a, you guys didn't want the resort, now you do. But all of a yeah. sudden, we get to this point in the show, last week, where you become mayor, and it's like almost a Laurel and Hardy bit, you're just like, I don't, bit, and then you're mayor, and yeah. then yeah. you open the door to the newspaper offices, and you have to tell your wife, who you said, we're going to slow down. Here's how I know yeah. we're going to slow down. I bought a bar. <laughs> <laughs> and and you have to come in and go, you know how I bought that bar? And I've already bartended several times, which I told you I wouldn't do. I'm now, I'm now mayor. And as you walked in, as someone who 
by all accounts, don't go listen to the episodes, but by all accounts, doesn't like the show. I literally said to Brandon as we're watching it, this is going to be good. Because I know, I know what's, like, I know what's happening. You guys are going to get to play. And it's very yeah. evident that that, like, the show is best when it lets great actors just play. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, and it's very clear that you guys have earned that trust to be that kind of almost a catch-all for this. Like, if they need comedy, if everything yeah. is too serious, Lee and Rosemary will bring the hijinks. If they need serious, because this other stuff is all lovey-dovey, and and uh, Lucas and, and Elizabeth are engaged, and everything's going great. Well, let's have this storyline where can they get to infertility. So, like, it, it, and you guys, you just never, you look so comfortable. You relish... Those those just oscillations, those giant oscillations from one plot point to another, and you take it with such a plum, like you just tackle it, and that's so admirable. And and you guys are clearly oh, having the time of your life. Oh, thank you. And but you know it's so funny as you say that that is literally what we pitch every year. Like that <laughs> is what that is what we want. We want to be able because she and I laugh our asses off literally every day, all day, and that's it's great. But you have to have the yin to the yang. So what we love is to be able to do comedy and to be able to kind of have some levity to this show that would otherwise be heavy. But then balance it all out with heartfelt moments, like real, real heart, where you can actually see that they're because if they're just comedy, then it's they're farcical and it's only one dimensional. But if they're if they can also really do like all the stuff with the kid and the fertility and, you know, where they're going with their lives, all that stuff, it's relatable and it's kind of real and it makes the comedy uh, a little less farcical and you're like, okay, I get it. They're doing Dizzy and Lucy and it's great, but, but I'll allow it because I know that when something real happens, they can go there too. Yeah. Is there anything that you haven't gotten to do on uh wind calls in your many uh, seasons that you hope to do? Maybe it happens this season or, or in just in the future that you would like to do with this Lee character. Well, I really like the stuff with the kid. I mean, it's a long time coming. Pascal Champion, that I, I'm kind of older, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to work with babies again. But uh, my my kids are kind of gr mostly grown up, and I forgot how much I missed mm. babies. Like it was really, it was really sweet. So I, I I like. I hope that the kid still likes being on our show, and I and I hope we do some more of that stuff on a more superficial level. They my my entrance to the first episode that I did is on a motorcycle. Right. And it's not really a motorcycle. It's a bicycle that they put a little electric motor in. But um, I've been asking to get the motorcycle back because <laughs> I've ridden motorcycles my whole life. And I want I they've given the bike to almost everybody else in town. And I would like Lee to get the motorcycle back at some point. Yeah, I well, we yeah, love that. You sold, didn't you sell the bike to, to Jesse, Jesse and then he left he town? Left town. So. That's right. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. Jesse drives around in that motorcycle all episode <laughs> and then has the audacity to get mad when it runs out of gas and he's stuck. And I was like, buddy, come on, man. Two brain Listen, cells, rub them together. It's Let's hard. go. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? You learn something new every day. You learn something, something new every day. day. You do. You do. Are you, you, you tell about Martin in season two telling you about the Hardys. Are you still, yep. uh, I somehow am still surprised when something happens to, to see the response. Uh, are, are you still surprised? Do things still happen where you go, boy, I just didn't see this response. Are, are you, are, or are you just not that in tune with what the Hardys are, are talking about? Well, I'm definitely uh, out of tune as far as my social engagement. It's sure. not my forte. I'm not very good at it, and I don't I don't read it whether it's good or bad um, because I I don't know that it's good for my mental health. So I I don't I post stuff about the show and I try to show the fans that I care and that I appreciate their involvement. But I'm I'm always trying to get my kids off social media, <laughs> and I don't want a dad that's sitting there doing all that so so i'm a little bit disengaged but i also <clears throat> i also come from sci-fi i've done a fair bit of sci-fi and i did a few conventions when i was young and I, I i've seen you know rabid fans and i know what that's like and i would say the hardies are like the the kindest version of it they're, they're like they're fans because of the nature of the show the nature of the show being community coming together and not being driven apart and not 
fighting and war, guns or violence or sex, but they're fans because of the sense of community. And, uh, and I, over the years, I've come to accept that that's why they're all there and that they kind of come at it from the most lovely place. There has, it hasn't been without some, you know, animosity. I mean, obviously the stuff with the love triangle and, and Daniel leaving and then, you know, Chris and Kevin coming and who's going to be the guy and who's not going to be the guy. And I know there's warring factions and that part's unfortunate, but I mean, it is just television yeah. and we're, we are just making a show, trying to entertain people at the end of the day. So um, <clears throat> I, I've said this many times and it's true. And I, and I, and I, anytime I get the chance to say it, I do is that the show doesn't exist without the Hardys. They kind of are the lifeblood of the show. Um, I, I think that we give them something that they like, that they're in the market for and, uh, and vice versa. We wouldn't be there without them. Uh I uh, I can't believe I'm asking this because it's such a Uh-oh. just a fan type question, but I you've been so incredibly honest that I have to. When you heard she was leaving Lucas and choosing Nathan, like the first time you like this is a show that deals like that pedals in uh, monogamy, that pedals in chasteness, that pedals in yep. very much like a kiss is pretty much. Marriage. Like marriage. Yeah. That is like, yeah. like they, Nathan and Elizabeth have not kissed yet, right? Mm-hmm. When you heard we've gotten kisses and we've gotten engagement, we got the kid, baby Jack is helping propose. Hey, buddy. When you heard, when it, no, we're not doing that right now. When, it, when, it, when you heard, <laughs> well, I don't know, I want to know when it was that they were like, so this year actually turns out Elizabeth is going to break up with Lucas and say, yeah, I never really loved you like that. And, and now I'm going to be with Nathan. That's who I had chemistry with all along, which she, they, she has chemistry with both of them. She has chemistry yeah. in spades. She's great. Yeah, Aaron agree. is unbelievable at that. We've had a chance to tell her that she's amazing. But when you heard that, like, what was the, the reaction? I, I'm sure it was very like, Oh, okay. I guess we're doing that now. But did you think, man, what are fans going to think? Because this is, I mean, this is a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I definitely f- I, I definitely was concerned. I, uh, I part of me was like, okay, I mean, this TV, we're trying to make something interesting, and I and it wasn't my character. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, but but what was told to me, and I don't, maybe this is too much information, but what was explained to me was that when that decision started to get bandied about, that we were looking at. If if things kept going the way they were a couple of seasons ago, so Rosemary and Lee have a baby, um, Elizabeth and uh, Lucas get hooked up. Yeah. What else is there? Where, where's the Where's the drama? Mm-hmm. Where's the rest? Of, where do we go as a show? So I I think that um, and there was there was, I think also sometimes one of the things that the Nathan character that they did when that storyline was kind of evolving with Lucas where it looked like Lucas was going to be the guy is that they had him back talk to her and stand up and be kind of like, you know, screw this. This is no, you're wrong. And, and nobody really did that on the show. And I think it really boosted their chemistry more. It became something a little different. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I know through experience that whatever side I take or, or speak up, it doesn't go well, that people get of pissed off one way, one way or the other. But I, both guys are such great guys, and they both do a really good job on the show. I don't really care who ends up with Elizabeth one way or the other. I just hope that, that when they make that choice, we find more things to write about. Pascal did confirm that Nathan did shoot Lucas. Wow. And I just want you, she already, <laughs> she confirmed it for us. Which so is really nice. Like, Kevin, you got that scoop. I, yeah, I just, really you cool. don't have to do that. Pascal already did that for you. So yeah, it works out good. well. Nathan did shoot Lucas. That's the big twist that at the end. For what it's worth, <laughs> the, the thing we're championing right now is whenever, if the show ends next season and five seasons, whatever, what we yeah. want is a spinoff where yes. Rosemary and Bill do a case of the week 
and you're <laughs> yeah. and, and but and you're brought in obviously. You as, as just the offer sage right. advice sage about your business and it clicks something with so Rosemary's like always following the case and then you'll say something and you help click like that. I show. would watch a That's Rosemary a uh, uh, Bill Avery detective procedural that is that's fun that's a fun time like it could be fun yeah so you know i i think that uh, jack is really in the last few years he's really embraced that role of being the curmudgeon yes. and it just it's yeah. so perfect and it's so funny you know it's uh, it's perfect for him yeah it, it did feel like early on he was Jack Wagner. Like, I, I'm here. I can't believe I'm yes. here. And then I'm now it's now yes. he's really invested. That's true. I would agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never talked really to him. He seems like a great guy. Uh, really he quickly, great, you've yeah. done a handful of Hallmark movies, of course. You've you've done Wind Calls to Heart. Do, it, do, you, do you have it? And you, and you got to kind of... Uh, create one from the ground up do you want to do more of that with the with the movies um or have you found yourself just being like i really love the 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 series i love doing the show and building a character over however many episodes or maybe a little bit of do do keep doing both well i actually um one of the things you realize pretty early on and i have written one of these as well uh, is that like I came, like I, like I told you guys, I come from theater and I got into theater because I actually wanted to be artsy fartsy, which doesn't come naturally. Um, so I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to be, I guess, an artist. But once you start, if you're not Brad Pitt or Daniel Day Lewis, you you don't really get much opportunity to be an artist. You get to be an actor and you find out that it's a job and it's like any other job and it's a good job and I like it. But as the show has gone on and it's offered a bit more security, uh, it shoots roughly half of the year, a little less than half of the year. And I have this big chunk of time that I do maybe a movie or something, sometimes a little bit more. Um, but I've always liked books and I've always liked writing and it doesn't involve anybody else. I don't have to have a partner or a network or anybody I don't have to cater to anybody. I can be as crazy or as artistic as I want. So I've been writing a lot, just like books. Mm. Wow. So I've, in the last three years, I've written four novels and I'm just, uh, that's sort of what I do with all my spare time now. Can we find them or are you just are waiting to publish them? No, no, I've just been writing. I haven't put any time into getting them published yet. I'm, and my, my reason for that is not because I don't want to do it. I do. Um, and I think the, the later few are, are good, but, um, I know how much rejection I have had to face as an actor and it can be very daunting over time. And I know that literature will be the same way, like agents and, and publishers, it'll be the same amount of rejection. And I don't want it to stop me from writing right now. I got a Love lot that. of stuff. Love I that. got a lot of stuff I want to get out. Yeah. Is okay. it, can you uh, tell us like a, a genre, a genre is it, is it win, or win, something? Wind calls the heart fanfic. Like what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> because boy do i have a uh, team gowan for you another thing that i've been championing is that gowan actually ends up with elizabeth because when those two have scenes together holy smackers there's some chemistry on screen but anyway yeah. you do your thing i'll i'll do my thing uh but yes genre i guess it would i, I mean it's 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 comedic in nature but uh gosh like c combine kurt vonnegut with like it's weird like that. I like weird stuff. But as I as I'm getting more and more, this latest one I'm just working on is kind of like a a, a retelling of my grandparents' lives. I mean, it's well, no nobody knows much about them, so it's got some the the style is a little bit more artsy fartsy. Uh, but it's sort of piecing together their past, how they met in the war, and what led to some of the ups and downs in their lives. And I've I've made most of it up because none of my family knows. Wow. So. They died under very sort of sad and tragic circumstances, and I, I tried to fill in a bunch of that for my own self. I write mostly for me. Like I like to fill in the blanks that are inside me, and that's sort of the the, the genesis of why I'm doing it. That's great. I love it. I love it. Should we rapid fire? Let's rapid fire. We each get to okay. ask you three questions that can be about anything. Uh, very different. Very than different what than what we've doing. been doing. And <laughs> yeah. uh, rapid in nature, unless you don't want to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Do whatever you want with it. Dan? Uh, your best guess, how many seasons when calls the heart? Pascal and I talked about it yesterday. We both hope 15. 15. More, more would be great. We'll take it. Like, we've all been told. I, I remember old, 
I shouldn't say old, but back in the day, Bill Avery, who was the head of Hallmark at the time, he wanted 20. He always had 20 in his mind. So that seems very fantastical to me. But, but so now we got to bump it a little bit, not unrealistically, but now we're hoping maybe 15. Yeah, I mm-hmm. like that. Um, do you have a go-to candy? And if so, what is it? Not a candy, but how about a confection? How about like a like a like a treat? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. There's these things in in Paris I found years ago. Now they're you everywhere. They're ubiquitous. But back when I first found them, like 25 years ago, they're these little. They look like little upside down bunt cakes, and they're called canale, and they're like crunchy honey on the outside mm. and soft custard on the inside. Yeah. So good. Sign me up right oh. now. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. Your favorite, okay. I know Joe Forte's is the birthday place. Is, is yep. that your favorite meal in, in Vancouver? No, my favorite meal is at a place called, um, oh my God, my wife just took me there for dinner the other day. Uh, Saint Laurent, it's a little French restaurant uh, in Gastown. It's so good. Mm. It does have a it does have a Michelin star. Oh, wow. Yep. This guy gets it. If uh, <laughs> if if reincarnation is what oh happens, um, do you have uh, a choice of which you would like to come back as? A bird. Oh, that's nice. One of I've always wanted to fly. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. It's beautiful. What's your favorite David Lynch movie? Oh, that's easy. Mulholland Drive. Oh. So I okay. A quick, so, I'm gonna I'm please, gonna expand on this. Please one. do that so movie's unbelievable. Go ahead. It's so good. So I went to the, I went to see Mulholland Drive with a friend of mine. Um, and this guy is sort of from my hometown, kind of rednecky and not that open minded. <laughs> and uh, there were 17 people in the theater. We counted. <laughs> and uh, so they were all girls except for my friend Kieran and I. And we watched the movie, and it's a bit of a mind bender and couldn't figure out what was going on, but loved it because it's just so sensual and so just so much so so artsy and uh when it was over one of the last things that happens is these little grandparents run out of a sandwich bag and i'm like okay i don't get it this is like and we we just started laughing and the movie stops it opens the lights come up and all the 17 people are just bewildered just like oh my god what was that and we all start talking and as we're leaving the 17 people are kind of talking and joking and laughing. And then we all decide by the time we get to the street that we're all going to go for dinner together and talk. What? About yeah. So we all went down to this little restaurant that's about two blocks away. And the 17 of us sat down at a table and talked about Mulholland Drive for a good hour. This is my new heavens and new earth. Everyone in yes. the theater has an experience together. They walk outside yeah. and go, can we continue this communal bonding? That's nice. Are you yeah. kidding me right now? This, no, this was in, this was in Canada. This was in Canada, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. This was yeah. in Canada. There's no way it was in Los Angeles. There's no way people in LA. <laughs> no were way. Like, it was in Los Angeles. No, this was no. Full, this is full. This is the thing is you guys with your health care and your community, <laughs> it's just better. It's just better, and that's unfortunate. We got. I feel good about a lot of what we do down here. We deep fry yep. stuff better. We do it. Yeah, yeah. But you, you guys, you guys, that's unbelievable. That's nice. What a story. It's really nice. Yeah, it's a good story, right? Uh, I got great. I got one more, which is before no. we started this, uh, we told you how we end the show by saying Merry Christmas. You said I love Christmas. Uh, I so take us into like Christmas Eve at the Smith household. Do you guys have a, a, a movie that you watch every Christmas Eve or some sort of tradition that you do together that you would like to share? I, I have a good Christmas tradition, right. and it's, it's one that comes out of sadness, I suppose. But um, when my folks divorced, uh, and like I said, I was raised by my father and we split Christmases. Um, so when it was my dad's turn, he had no idea what to do with us at Christmas time. He just <laughs> no idea. So, so he, for, for quite a few of the Christmases we had with him, he took us out to Banff and there's this, uh, whole, Banff is this little ski mm-hmm. town just outside of Calgary. And there's a castle there, a big old castle hotel called the Banff Springs Hotel. And it is Christmas incarnate. It feels like the North Pole. And so when I started dating my wife, I for our cr- first Christmas together, I took her there. And then we got married there at Christmas. Wow. And then we've tried. It, it's it's a getting, getting a little absurd price-wise because with inflation and stuff, I'm not sure how long we're going to be able to afford to do this. But if we have a decent year, I try and take the family to the Bam Springs Hotel. Wow. And we've been fortunate enough to go quite a few times. And so that's our that's our our big tradition is kind of ponying up the money to try and go to this 
big castle in the Rockies That's and awesome. go skiing and 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 I it's love it. big. Uh, Hey, Gussie, the whole place up. And then as far as movies goes, I, I'm definitely a Wonderful Life and Bishop's Wife. Those are my nice. two big ones. Yeah. Nice. The original yeah. Bishop's right. Wife. Classic. Classic. Well, uh, when's, you get, did you get married in December? Yeah, we got married December 21st. Oh, nice. December 15th. There you go. Nah, nice. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah. Kevin, this has been an absolute blast. Uh, every guest we have on, we do ask, uh, we love to bring joy around here. If there's a charity... Uh, of your choice that we can highlight and put a spotlight on and give some money to personally and encourage others to as well. I, I will actually, I, a little story with this one too. Every year on our show, we um, have a contest to, uh, it's actually, it's all around Vancouver. It's all the shows, all productions and shows have a, have a contest as so you can donate the most to the local uh, greater Vancouver food bank. And our show, our little tiny, low budget, cheap show, has won several times and donated the most wow. to the food bank here in Vancouver. And like everywhere in North America, uh, downtown's a disaster. And uh, so food is, is at a premium. And this past year was the first year that the show wasn't able to do it because everybody was tight and it just didn't happen. So um, I guess I would say if anybody wants to, I mean, it doesn't have to be the, the greater Vancouver food bank, but maybe everybody reaches out to their local food bank and, uh, and helps out. I love that, that. greater Vancouver food bank love or that. the food bank of your choice. Uh, both wonderful. Uh, Kevin, an absolute blast, sir. You're in the one hour club over an wow. hour. The oh, stories wow. were we great. You were amazing. So open and honest. We thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome, guys. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. You as well. And until next time, maybe we'll be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast is produced by Aaron Shea. What? For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on the Deck the Hallmark family, you can go to bramblejamplus.com. Deck the Hallmark is presented by Philo TV. For a free trial of Philo, go to philo.tv slash DTH. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here in the old studio. Thanks for listening or don't listen. It's really up to you at this point. It's at the end of the show. I mean, you're listening to me. Hi. But here they come. I promise they're coming. Yep. Here they are. Happy day.